those in. Uh, let me see if I can do that myself. Just drag and drop them in. And now we have our background, which is completely just different from the normal flappy bird, of course. And the bird just also just not new texture, trust me. Okay, so first things first, um, like normal, you're going to, uh, that's the wrong button. You're going to import your Pi game on Improt. I need to make this larger as well. Come on. That is not heat. Okay. I'm going to import Pi game. I'm going to import, uh, error. Where did that come, bro? Import Pi game. Or random and we're going to also use import time. Now we're going to pi game dot init initialize pi game. Uh, first we're going to create a screen and since uh, I'm lazy I'm going to just <laughs> not use variables. This is pretty bad practice but just keep it like this for now I guess. 500 and 750 will be our screen size and it is it's also the same size as the background PNG dimensions. Can you find the, can you see the dimensions? Yes, 500 up here, the tab name 500 by 750, that should be the screen because that is the background. The hair or what? Okay. Um, and now the background, we're going to load back ground image. I'm so good at spelling. Pi game dot image image dot load. I think you've done this before, and then you put that ground dot png. JPG actually, my bad. I don't know why it shaved a GP JPG, but oh well. And now we load the bird image, which is pi game all dot image dot load. And you put the name of that. I'm gonna move this over a little so it could fit that into the same line. Yep, there we go. Uh, dot load for one dot png. That should be that. And so when our bird starts off, we're gonna keep them at bird x equals to fifty, bird y equals to three hundred, and we're gonna have a variable called bird y change and this is going to be very important later on right and same as before we're going to have an fps variable to declare the fps and in this game i'm just going to keep it at 30 because you don't really need to run it at like 60 fps pi game dot time dot clock to create the clock for the fps uh and that's that uh we're also going to make uh, running true, which is, oh, I am horrible at this, true with capital T waiting, which is going to be a variable I'm using later on, and collision, which is going to be equal to false. Um, this is going to be like your win checking condition, like when you hit the pole or something. And so while running, while the game is running, Going to want to screen dot fill zero 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 and just fill the screen with white so uh, the background isn't just black when you open it up and screen dot blip onto that. Uh, your background image. and the position of the background image. So zero, zero, this is the very top left of the rect. And so if, when you print it at zero, zero, it's going to be just be able to cover the entire screen. And here we're going to have like a bunch of stuff, I guess. Yeah. Uh, display, going to first pi game dot display dot update because that's what you do for every one well, most pi game games and clock dot tick ps and at the very end outside of the while loop you're going to pi game dot quit this is this code uses a bit of a different system 
than uh, what you would usually use. And so there's we have a variable called waiting. And while waiting, what we're basically going to do is check for all our other conditions in the game. I'm too used to Java programming. That's why I put my brackets there, but don't do that. If um, collision, this is just all theoretical uh, talk right now because we're going to make all these uh, functions later. If collision, then we run a function that we're later going to make called game over. And we're going to make another function called start, which is basically going to allow the player to restart the game once they lose and they see the game over screen. And if not that, then you just start, which means you initiate the game. And then, oh, that is not what I wanted to do. Uh, here, we're going to write a for event uh -oh, in high game dot event dot get. So get an event. And if the event or like key press is equal to pressing a key, high game dot key down. Uh, and uh, that, what happened there? Okay. And if the event dot key is equal to pi game dot uh, k space, uh, it's a colon. Oh, why does it do that? It's just okay. Then the score you reset to zero. Um, bird y equals to 300. And so basically when you press space, you want to reset the game basically. This is a little game start sort of thing. 500 and you set waiting to false. And so you'll get out of this um, event loop. So while waiting is here. And so basically while you're in this uh, loop, you'll be waiting for the user to input a space bar or to just close the program. And so we also need to make a close uh, event. So if uh, this is in line with the pi game dot key down, if event dot type is equal to pi game dot quit, if you quit uh, by pressing the X or something, that, uh, why does it keep doing that? Okay. And then your running is going to be equal to false. Wait. Yeah, wait. What am I doing? That, that is perfectly fine. Oh, I wrote that wrong. And your waiting is also going to be equal to false because you want to make sure that when you quit the game, you're out of this loop and you're also out of this loop. And so you go to pi game, you'll quit. Uh, we can start by writing these functions. Mm, let me go up a little. I'm going to write it in between here. Just going to make some space. Uh, define start, which is one of our. Why does it do that? We're going to do display equals start font dot render. This is just basically rendering uh, words onto the screen. And why, why does, please just let me, <laughs> well, uh, press space bar to start, I guess. I don't know. Uh, you end the quote. Okay. I don't know why I kept on creating an automatic quote past that true, which is just, you don't need to worry about that yet. You don't, know, you don't really need to worry about that, but just, it just, just follow along on that. Oh, my mouse disconnected. Never mind. Uh, you do screen dot blit. You put the display. Uh, and this is just a position on the screen. So basically what you do here is you render this text. Why is this giving me Start font is on. Oh, I need to declare start front. Okay. Start font. <laughs> I'm stupid. Pygame.font.font. 
very odd syntax, I know, but make sure the second font is capital and the first one is not capital because that's that's just how it works. It is very case sensitive and it is not fun when you try and debug and <laughs> the only wrong thing is just accidentally having something that's uncapitalized. There we go, that should work. Yep, that works. So basically here we uh, initialize the font as free sans bold. And then over here we use, um, we basically render the letters and then we split it onto the screen for them to see. And so then you do high game dot display dot update. So just to make sure you print it onto the screen and that should be the start method. Now, what other method would you use? Game over. Invalid syntax. I, I think that's Repla just glitching out. Uh, should be fine, I think. That said, um, game over. We're going to define a game over method as well. These are just temporary checks. And maximum, oh, maximum equals max score list. And what we're going to create here is like on the game over screen, you're going to have like a score list. This is just an extra feature, really. You don't really need this. Uh, max score list basically finds the biggest score you have, with, uh, finds the biggest number within score list and returns it basically. And so you go display one. These are just horrible. One, one dot render. They're just rendering more words onto the screen for like, in fact, I guess, game over. Oh, and the quote through and the color. Here and then you do screen dot lit. You display the rendered font onto the screen. Uh oh, oh no, not three thousand. That should be good. And then, if you want to display some more text, you can. I'm just gonna do some a little bit more. I'm just gonna game over. Just going to just copy the words from there because that's or this is just rendering more font onto the screen. These brackets, and then you do score. Uh, then you go max score, which then you do maximum. So there are two variables in here and basic, uh oh, that is not good. I need to finish this. So the red lines don't make me think I did something wrong. There and then screen dot blit. Display two dot fifty four hundred. Okay. So why is that wrong? Is that is that wrong? Score. I, we don't have a. Okay, we need to we need to declare the fonts. Game over font one. I guess this is an error. Apply game dot font dot font. Uh, going to three sans bold thirty two exact same thing here. Oh, that is not good. We're just gonna copy and paste the one from up top down there. And then we're gonna make another font, which is just gonna be the exact same thing but called font two. And we're going to, wait, we're going to make font one uh, 64 here. So big, oh, not 360, 64. It's basically gonna make the font bigger, right? So when you print it to the screen, it'll be larger than the other ones. Invalid syntax, okay, no, that's just Replit messing with me. Uh, and if score, Or that equals to maximum. 
a three equals. This is this is not necessary for any of the game. It just makes the game look nicer. Want to dot render f new my score note. Basically, just telling you this is the best attempt you've had uh, through here. And 235. And deleted a bracket by accident. Screen dot split. Display three and 80 and 100. So that is your game over and start game uh, and your basic game loop. If we run it, I don't think it's going to run well, but. It's. There we go. Pi games loaded up and you have your Pi game window. You have your press space bar to start, which we set over here. You press space bar, nothing happens. Why? Because we have no bird and we have no pipes. You cannot do anything with just a game over and a start. <laughs> and it's, it's not closing either because I did some bad code and there is no quit in the larger bracket. Oh, to just click the stop button on there. Normally, if you're using another application, you'd have to Alt F4 that, which is a force close. But don't do that on Chrome because all you're going to do is close down your Chrome and that is not what you want. <laughs> Uh, so outside of the waiting, this is the importance of having a uh, Pi game event quit checker. If you have outside the while loop here, you can create a for event in Pi game dot event dot get, and then if event uh -oh, if event dot type equals to Pi. It. same as above then you just set running equals to false which will basically break the loop and so now when we run it and it loads there we go your pi game window you press space bar you could click x and it'll exit now which is basically very nice it's a very nice thing to have to be able to exit your game and not break your computer okay now we're going to work a little on the player Event dot type equals to pi game dot key down. Uh, it did that thing again. If event dot key equals to pi game dot k underscore space. So now this is this loop was for during while you're waiting in the menu and this. Uh, these options are now for when you're actually playing the game. And so now we're going to start using those variables that I created. Bird y change equals to minus five. And so we'll apply that later on. And if event.type equals to high game dot key up. If event, I'm just going to copy and paste from here. If event equals to pi game dot space, then your bird y is now equal to three. So you go down. So when you're holding down space, you go up. And when you're letting go of space, you go down automatically, which is like not, it's flabby bird, not flappy bird. It's, there's going to be a bit of a difference. <laughs> not a difference. Uh, the difference is that you're going to be holding down the space bar to go up and instead of just tapping it to just jump, I guess, makes the game easier for me so I don't look like I'm horrible at video games when I'm playing it later. But it does <laughs> make you look horrible because you implemented it to make it easier for you. So that kind of says, yeah, it kinda does. Like, that kinda <laughs> says something about your ability. Yeah, so over <laughs> good point. Uh, over here, I'm going to create like a bird boundary, I guess, so you don't go flying off the edge. Uh, bird y greater than or equal to 571. This is just making sure your bird doesn't like fly off the screen into oblivion. 
to a point where you can't see it. So like you have like the edge of the screen boundaries, I guess is what you would call this to just make sure that you can still see your bird. Oh boy, that is not good. Okay. And yeah, that's, this is just the basic movement for the bird. And now we're going to have a function called display underscore bird, which is, well, it's going to display the bird. Bird underscore y, which is variables we've created, but we haven't created the function. And we're going to do a score underscore display. Actually, you know what? We're going to do that later. Uh, now we're going to do, well, we don't need to do collisions yet. I mean, this should be, we just need to make the display bird function now, which is going to be up here somewhere. We're going to def display bird. Now this is basically going to do exactly what it says, right? You're going to have an X and Y input and you're going to screen dot blit your bird image. Uh oh, bird underscore image. And the X and Y of the bird is just the input X and Y. Now, I think this should work. This should work. This, this, I'm, I'm hoping this does work. Yes, now, now you have your bird. And when you hold space bar, he goes up. When you don't hold space bar, he goes down. This, <laughs> this is a <laughs> flabby bird. But like there, there's some things missing from the game. You can't just have a bird. You also need something called the obstacles. Now the obstacles are going to be a bit more complicated. And the background is also uh, not moving at all, but we ignore that for now. Uh, here we can have our obstacles. Wait, no, I'm going to put that up there actually. To have your obstacle underscore x plus equals obstacle underscore x underscore change. Actually, I'm going to declare all these variables up there somewhere first. This is <laughs> going to be having a lot of variables for your obstacles and like, yeah. So your obstacle with, I can just turn on caps lock, honestly. Obstacle underscore width is equal to 70. All of these are static variables, meaning that they most likely will not change or are defined by um, certain things that will not change that, like this random, uh, random the rand int where we're using the imported random uh one for 50 this is just to randomize the length of the uh the height of the pipe so you can like not have the exact same pipe come at you over and over again you have an obstacle score color which is equal to 211 this is just the flap closest close color to the flappy bird pipe thing i don't know i just found it randomly obstacle underscore x underscore that is not an underscore change which is equal to negative three and we have an obstacle underscore gap which is equal to 200. you have also an obstacle x which will be constantly changing obstacle underscore x, which is equal to 500. So why I set it to 500 is because I want it to start on the very edge of my screen and we have a 500 wide screen. So to spawn it on the edge of the screen, you just spawn it there and it'll be good. Uh, yep, that should be all the variables you need. I'm also gonna predefine a method called display obstacle. Now this method is going to be using a little bit of math. Um, going to have the uh, height be input in because that's going to be constantly changing every time. Uh, that is in my way. I'm going to put that there. Pi game dot draw dot rect. We're not actually going to be using pipe images because those are annoying to deal with. <laughs> you can have a screen. You're going to have an 
ops, you're now gonna have your obstacle color be here. Just deleted itself again. Uh, and then you're gonna have your obstacle. That is some very nice UI replit. <laughs> uh, you're gonna have your obstacle X zero, which is static. You're gonna want your obstacle width. And you're gonna want your height. So basically what this is doing, I'm gonna click off so you can see. Yeah, that should be fine. This is basically just drawing the uh, rectangle. Well, not drawing, it's creating it, but yeah. Well, no, it is drawing it. What am I saying anymore? I'm sorry. <laughs> I equals two. So you're gonna have two rectangles, one which is going to be the top one, and this is going to be drawing the one on the bottom, which is just going to be relative to the one up top. Obstacle gap. Right, and we just copy and paste the entire entire thing again. And then over here, you have your screen, your obstacle color, you have your obstacle X. But then here, you're going to change the zero to height plus obstacle gap. And that should be good. And then you change the height as well to obstacle bottom height, which is why we created that. And that should be able to successfully draw your um, pipes into the frame. Uh, and then down there, all we need to do is um, draw your obstacle and move it. So what we do here is just display obstacle. Boy display obstacle perfect and you put your obstacle height in there and you have um you have a generation of obstacles which will go after that actually oh no that's not what i wanted to do <laughs> do not split a line like that it is not proper coding obstacle underscore x is less than or equal to negative 10. And if it is, then your obstacle underscore x is now equal to 500 to reset the obstacle and create a new one. And your obstacle underscore height, oh, I can spell, uh, is just another random int, rand int. It was like 150 to 450 or something. And score plus equals to one. That should be fine. I'm actually going to comment this out for now because that is, that is not the right language. Okay. Stop the Flappy Bird and now we can run. It should display our... Yes, we have our very high quality pipes coming in now, but when we touch them, nothing happens, and that that is not that is not good, right? So you have your pipes that like leave and respawn and then leave again, and they have varying heights. But when it goes to the end, just nothing happens. This is just very very sad, Flappy Bird right now, and you can't even die, right? So what we need now is the collision. Um, I'm going to be creating more variables for this as usual. Uh, if that, and then that. Now we're going to be creating a collision, which I think we created before already, equals to a method that we're going to create called collision. I'm going to stop this because it's, it's, it's distracting me. Detection. <laughs> obstacle. Uh, you're basically going to input all the obstacle uh, variables into there. Obstacle height. Gonna give it the bird y and the obstacle underscore height and the obstacle gap. Now I will say that this um this <laughs> collision system is not the best, but it works well enough. That um, I'll say that much. Uh, then we're gonna write that function later, and if 
collision, if you're collision, uh, if, if you hit something, then score under list dot append your score and waiting equals to true. Probably going to implement this later as well. But yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Now we need to go up and declare the collision detection uh, method, which is going to be very somewhere, somewhere up here. I'm just gonna leave it here because why not define collision detection. And so what we're just going to be uh, putting in the obstacle underscore X, the obstacle height, well, we're gonna make it, yeah, we're gonna make it a smaller case here since we're probably going to mix it up some one way or the other. Uh, bottom underscore obstacle height, that should be good. And then through this, if obstacle underscore X is greater than or equal to 50 and obstacle underscore X is less than or equal to this is not using the, um, no, no, that is wrong, plus 64. This is not using the Pi Games uh, rect six system, which is bad practice, especially if you're importing Pi Game already, but it's it's like, it's, it's a solution that works. This is just basic uh, coordinate checking. Obstacle underscore height, or, or, yes, that is not the right or bird underscore y plus equals 64 is greater than or equal to bottom underscore obstacle. Let me spell. Okay. Hi. And then if so, then you return that. Yes, it has hit something. Oh, I keep on putting that colon. And if not, then return no. So basically, oh my God. Okay. So basically what this does, it is um, it checks the uh, position of the bird and compares it to the obstacle. And if your bird is touching the obstacle, well, quote unquote, touching the obstacle, then yeah, basically uh, returns true that you have hit something. I say quote unquote touching because it's really just taking the uh, coordinates of the bird and just like checking if it's like within the coordinates of the uh, pipe. Well, supposed pipe. Now for us, it's just green rectangles, which is just absolutely amazing. <laughs> uh, now we should be able to do that. I think that might work. Now let's get hit by a pipe here. And then you get your game over screen. Amazing. Now your score and max score, we don't have that variable. Well, we do have the variable. It's just that we haven't done anything with it yet. But now you see you have your Flappy Bird game. But you can literally just rest on the ground though. So I don't know. And you see why I mean like, <laughs> you see what I say when I say like very bad collision. So, okay, whatever. Bad collision system. Like I can bump my butt onto this thing and it will not care. That was a horrible example. But yeah, this is, this is the basic game. If you want to implement score and other things, then yes, you can do that too. I can probably do that within the time limit I'm given right now though. Yeah, as you see, it scraped my butt, but it doesn't matter because horrible collision system. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, it's not horribly, uh, it's, not, it's not that horrible, it's pretty good. Press spacebar to start again, and then you can just play around with that. Okay, so now we're going to implement the score, finally. Um, I've been starting on about that, like, for a while. So within your collision, every time you collide with something, a uh, score list, you append the score in which you currently have. And uh, when you pass an obstacle, score plus equals one. So you get a new score, right? Uh, up here, I think I have a score reset to zero. Yup, every time you restart the game, your score gets set to zero. Uh, and then over here, game over, you have your score list as well. Yep. Now we're going to make a score display somewhere up here. It doesn't really matter anymore. 
Uh, now we're going to set our score, which is going to be a variable there, and then our score font as usual in pygame.font.font. We really don't need to create another one, but I'm just gonna copy and paste from start font into here. Yes, it's, a, it's the exact same thing. I'm not creating a different font for that. I just want like a good name for it. Display and you input your score into here. And in here, you really just display your font. Display equals to score underscore font. And then you render it. You put the F and then your score. The F stands for format, by the way. Uh, or and then true, comma, and then you put the color of it. I'm just gonna make it black because I don't want like a random red score in the top right. And then uh, now we can just screen dot bullet uh, your display. And you can put 10, 10, just to make sure that it's not like glued to the corner. But we haven't actually called this, have we? Uh, so under here, we can just do another one, which is just display underscore. Oh wait, no, oops, I wrote it backwards. Oh well, I can flick that by just writing score display and display the score. Now this should be it, I think. Yeah, so when the pipe respawns, you get your score. It's not really when you passes you, but yeah, you get that. It's, it's, just, it's a working game, right? And when you die, yeah, you do high score, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And your score, your max score. So if I die again, it should not. Yeah, so your score is zero and your max score is two. And that's basically it. That should be it, I think. And yeah, if you want to add anything else, you can. But that is that is just the gist of the game. You can just... <laughs> You can also add sound effects and stuff, but I mean, it, I think you should fix some other things if you want to modify the game first. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it can be like modified very heavily oh, if you want, collision. but <laughs> very good collision. <laughs> well, okay, the collision's not bad for up and down, but like for for the back, it's just not very good. Is the front good? No, the front. You can you, you can sink your entire mouth into the pipe, and they will not care. Oh uh, well, they kind of does. Right? Yeah, it it sent it's uh hitbox is the center line. Yeah, it checks the um. I mean, I can do that right now actually if I want to and just do some quick maths. Uh, where is the collision checking? If a bird y is less than or equal to obstacle height. Uh, if Alps goal X is greater than less than 50, this is hard coded in. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is very nice. Uh, I'm gonna open this image in the new tab. And what what is that title? 91 by 64. Very interesting. Okay. So if I go down there, where am I going? <laughs> Where's the collision? Where's the collision? Okay. Uh, if bird Y is less, uh, no, it's up here. If obstacle X is greater than or equal to 50 and obstacle X is less than or equal to, this should fix it. Wait. I think that should do, Wait, that, that might fix it. I, I'm probably wrong about that, but <laughs> it's worth a try. Uh, my bird was floating for a second. Yep, there we go. Now you can't touch your beak onto it. Um, that said, it should be 50. Uh, I mean, just 
should it really be 50 here? The bird y x, the bird x is 50. So the back check should, sure. Uh, I think that should be fine. But if bird y is less than or, or equal to obstacle height or bird y, I think that should be 91. Hmm. If bird y is less than or equal to obstacle height, which is that. No, I think that should be 64 since it's talking about the y. Yeah, that should be 64. But that, that's like partly fixed, I think. I think, like, I think you can still scrape your butt on it and it's not going to care, but that is a very short, yeah. I don't, the butt of the bird can still just not be detected. Okay, we fixed part of it. We, we partly fixed it. That's, that's Wait, a, isn't, the, isn't the butt of the bird at, like, the back? Like, yes. not, the, not the bottom? So its stomach cannot be detected. Sure. Why does it do that? What the <laughs> the obstacle X may oh. Uh that is not right. That is very incorrect. That is just no uh, no. The obstacle X. I can just get rid of that argument, really. Can I? It's 50 forward. If obstacle 50 uh, the, just died, okay. <laughs> if obstacle X is, I think this is going to break greater than or equal to zero. You have, how, how wide is it? Uh, 70. It's 70, then 50. Negative 20, that would make sense, but that's just, that means you can just remove this argument in itself. It just doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> uh, is it gonna, did, did, I, did I break replit? Hello? <laughs> is my replit broke? Uh, is my replit broken? I think my replit's broken. <laughs> just refresh it, I think. Oh, no, there we go. That works now. If it doesn't work, just try again and again and again. And my, there we go. Now it's loading. Let's, uh... oh, wow. Thanks, lag. <laughs> yep, now it works. But it, now it's a square hit box. So even if you land, like, within the very bottom left pixel, you're going to die. <laughs> but that's that's the collision fix. <laughs> Simple math, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah, basically. So that's that, that's that's your um, fun scrolling game. Yay! The background's not moving at all, but that's uh, I could do that if I wanted. Do I want to do that? No, I don't really want to do that. I could do. Yeah, that. it's fine. Uh, yeah, whatever. I give up. <laughs> right. <laughs> not doing this now. We have four minutes. I'm not going to be able to speed run that. Uh, okay. Now, if there are any questions, we can take questions. Yep. Like, if anyone's asking things. Yes. <laughs> New high score exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. Just use Pi Games for act. <laughs> can I share code? Yes, I can. Um, going to file oh, this. Sure. Obligatory. Share it as a text file. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just gonna copy and paste the code into um. Uh, the, the Zoom chat, you can copy and paste from there. <laughs> Let's use the paste bin. Okay, I'm just going to make a guest paste. New paste. Syntax, folder, nobody cares. Uh, actually, I do care. Python, please. <laughs> Expiration date never, exposure unlisted, I don't care. Password, burn after red, no thanks. Name title, create new paste. 
I will put this in the chat and this will be accessible forever. Um, why am I private messaging Jerry? Okay, here we go. Dot exe file. <laughs> That's not how you pack a Python file to an executable. That is, <laughs> I don't think that works, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Flabby per dot. Oh, yes, that is just an amazing file. Yes, for sure. All right. Um, that's probably it then. <laughs> Thanks yep. for playing this cool game. So, <laughs> cool uh, game, bro. Coming, everyone. Uh, are there are any other questions you can ask in our Discord server? Uh, just uh, frantically ping Jake if you have any questions. <laughs> frantically ping me. No, 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 no. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> that's. That would be that would be not fun for me. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, next week we'll be starting our game jam, so stay tuned for that. Yep. yep. That's it. Thanks for coming. Goodbye, people. Bye. Goodbye. Also, I think frantically ping Jake is a very good idea. <laughs> this is not. That is not a good idea. That is. That is not going to be fun for me. <laughs> I, I think I literally have the entire server muted except for the exec channels. Oh, wait, I think you do. <laughs> yeah. Wow, look at me and my high high score of nine in Flabby Bird. Wow. Oh, wow, amazing. Oh, Eddie's drawing on my screen. Epic, I know, right? <laughs> oh, okay, well, amazing gameplay. <laughs> Uh, max score updated. Uh, okay. J Jake. Amazing. I know, right? Bad. Who wrote bad? <laughs> yeah, I can't even see. What? Who just drew a giant square over everything? <laughs> what? Okay, thanks for calling me bad, Matthew. That is just... Uh, uh, obstacle change. Let's make this faster. Wow, look at this beautiful modification. Speedy bird. Wow. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Who's, okay, it's yeah. like one of those ripoff racer games now. <laughs> Deep <laughs> fried. <laughs> <Ryan>. <laughs> Uh, All right. uh, I, I am so good at this. Post, are you going to post everything as a material? Uh, you want to do that for me? <laughs> <laughs> I think you should do it, though, because...